Hello class. For this lesson, I'll be focusing in on electron shielding and repulsion, as well as penetration, to help us understand the nature of valence electrons. The learning objectives are to be able to explain subshell splitting for multi-electron atoms in terms of penetration and shielding. From this, we will be able to determine the number of valence and core electrons in various atoms and ions. Within a multi-electron atom, all of the electrons are attracted towards the center of the atom, which bears the positive charge, given a value Z or Z, which corresponds to the number of protons in the atom. However, the electrons are also repelling each other in that each electron carries a negative charge, and as we know, equal charges repel. In particular, it's important to note that electrons that are at higher energy levels tend to be further away from the nucleus of the atom, whereas lower energy electrons tend to be closer in towards that nucleus. This results in an effect called electron shielding, in which a certain electron of interest will be essentially blocked from feeling the positive charge of the nuclear protons because of the negative charge of the closer electrons in. Note that having any electrons that are even farther out will not impact the uh, pull of the positive force on our electron of interest. Only the electrons which are closer in will have this shielding effect. So we can quantify the shielding effect using a term called the effective nuclear charge, or Z effective. In this case, we can estimate the effective nuclear, nuclear charge on an atom by starting with the value Z, which is the number of protons, as our positive force, and then subtracting out one for each electron in between our electron of interest and the nucleus. So we're looking at a lithium atom here, and we know that a lithium atom has three electrons. So its first two electrons are going to be in the lowest possible energy orbital, which is the 1s orbital, and the third electron will be farther out in the 2s orbital. So the effective nuclear charge on that third electron would be the positive three from the nucleus minus the two interior electrons. So the outer electron is feeling a positive charge of only about plus one. It's important to note here though that the 2s orbital does not mean that the electron is in the 2s orbital is always further out from the center. Remember, the Bohr orbits do not actually rep correctly represent where electrons are. They do not stay at the outer perimeter of their potential space. Instead, we understand now that electrons will occupy uh, multiple positions within uh, their possible space, and that with the 2s orbital, we actually have a set of concentric rings. So at some point, the 2s electron will actually pass closer to the nucleus. It will not always be at the outer edge experiencing that positive one. At some points, it will dip in closer and experience the full three plus charge of the lithium nucleus. We can demonstrate this by looking at a plot of the wave function versus the distance of the electron from the nucleus. Notice that in the dark purple peak, we're seeing that the 1s electrons are mostly cl very close to the nucleus of the atom. So they are going to feel that full three plus charge. We can contrast that with the 2s peak shown here in green, where we see the first probability area being very, very close to the nucleus, and then a node, and then the next 
outer ring probability area where the majority of the electron will spend its time. So yes, the 2s orbital is a higher energy orbital and tends to be further away from the nucleus of the atom, but during some point in time, the electrons in the 2s orbital will actually penetrate into the 1s region, feeling more of that effective nuclear charge. And so that's where the idea of electron penetration comes from. It's when these higher energy electrons are actually coming closer in to the nucleus within the space of lower energy orbitals. So if we actually calculate out the true Z effective of a 2s electron in lithium using a more complicated model, we see that it actually has a value of 1.28 rather than just 1. And this 0.28, this increase in effective nuclear charge, is because of the amount of time that 2s electrons spend in this uh, portion of the 2s orbital close to the nucleus. This brings us to the concept of valence electrons. Valence electrons are those electrons in the highest principle shell, which tend to have the lowest Z effective. So they have the lowest effective nuclear charge, and so they are held the least tightly into the center of the atom. The electrons that are in the lower energy shells and have the higher effective nuclear charge are referred to as the core electrons. One of the reasons that we focus in on the behavior of electrons and looking at their effective nuclear charge is that these electrons with low effective nuclear charge can be either shed or gained in a chemical reaction. And atoms actually will prefer to shed excess uh, valence electrons or add in a few valence electrons so that they can achieve a more stable configuration in terms of their orbital diagrams. Remember, the most favorable orientation for orbitals is to have a completely full shell. To illustrate the role of the effective nuclear charge on whether an electron behaves as a valence electron or a core electron, we're going to look at a sodium atom. So sodium atoms have electron configuration of a full 1s orbital, a full 2s orbital, all three 2p orbitals are full, and then that final 11th electron is in the 3s orbital. If one looks at the relative distance of these electrons from the center of the atom, as shown on the plot on the right here, we can see that, once again, the 1s electrons are closest in to the nucleus, followed by the 2s electrons, along with their small proportion that is penetrating the 1s. And then that 3s electron spends part of its time even further away from the nucleus, part of its time in the 2s orbital, and part of its time within the 1s orbital. If we calculate out or estimate, if we estimate the effective nuclear charge on these four different electron types, we'll see that the 1s electrons have approximately a positive 11 effective nuclear charge. The 2s electrons are being shielded by the two 1s electrons, so their effective nuclear charge is more like positive 9. The 2p electrons are being shielded by both the 1s and the 2s electrons, so they have 11 minus 4 for an effective nuclear charge of 7, while that 3s electron is shielded by, from almost all of that nuclear charge by these inner electrons, and it only feels an effective nuclear charge of about positive 1. That means that this 3s electron is not held very tightly at all. And if a sodium ion were to lose this electron, it would end up with the electron configuration of Na plus being that of the noble gas neon. So it would have completely full 1s, 
two s and two p orbitals, which is a favorable state to be in, rather than having this half full high energy electron shell of the three s orbital. When we're looking at larger atoms, the distinction between what is a core electron and what is a valence electron becomes a little muddier. For instance, we're going to look at the example of germanium. Germanium has an atomic number of 32 and is found in the fourth row of the periodic table. Therefore, it's going to contain all of the same electrons as its previous noble gas, argon, and in addition to that, it will contain electrons with energies associated with the 4s orbital, the 3d orbital, and the 4p orbital. If we consider the effective nuclear charges on each of these high energy electrons, you'll notice that though our abbreviated electron configuration shows that the 4s, the 3d, and the 4p are all higher energy electrons, our effective nuclear charge indicates that those 3d electrons are feeling almost as much of the effective nuclear charge as the 3s and the 3p. This is because the 3d orbital penetrates quite deeply into those lower energy spaces. On the other hand, we notice that the 4s and the 4p have significantly reduced effective nuclear charge compared to these 3d electrons. Therefore, when considering valence electrons as those electrons which are held least tightly into the nucleus of the atom and most available to react, we're going to only focus in on the s and p orbitals. So you'll remember from a previous slide, the valence electrons are those electrons with the highest principal quantum number. So we are focusing in on the 4s and the 4p electrons rather than the 3d electrons when identifying valence electrons. So at this point, we can go through a couple practice problems to identify core electrons and valence electrons. Feel free to pause the video now and work through these problems on your own before resuming and seeing the responses. See you in the next one.